Yeah, you can go ahead and see. Yeah. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm glad I showed up this morning. How about you? Yeah. I tell you, there's victory in here this morning. Uh, it's not, listen to me, it's not a feeling. It's right here. There's victory in here this morning. It's right here. It's in the middle of you. Your spirit is connecting to it. That's how you get a hold of the things of God. You get a hold of the things of God through your spirit who contacts the Holy Spirit. Amen? So it has nothing to do with your feelings. It has nothing or even less to do with your circumstances. Because, well, can we be honest? Some of your circumstances look impossible. I'm so glad they do. You see, if they were possible, it could, that would be something that you could figure out. Mm -hmm. What I'm glad about is that they look impossible to you. Because with God, all things are possible. And there is nothing impossible to him or her that believes. Amen. 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 So, impossibility... I said this Friday night under the unction of the Holy Ghost. For a Christian, there is no such thing as, come on, impossible. impossible and there's no such thing as incurable. Mm -hmm. Oh, let that sink in. Yeah. There's no such thing as incurable. Yeah. You don't understand. The doctor said, da, 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 da. I didn't say you didn't have a good doctor. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say that that's what the tests said. What I'm saying is there's nothing incurable mm -hmm. to the Christian. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nothing. Uh, we've gone to hospice where they said incurable and the power of God said otherwise. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Some of you were here a couple of weeks back with Ann. Doctor said impossible. That's never going to be healed. Right? Ann left this service and went down to our buddy Jack. Hey, Jack. Yep. Went down to Jack uh, Yuris' church in Maryland, down there in uh, New York. And the very first moments of her service, somebody's blind eye opened up. Oh, now listen, you can go, okay, well, maybe she was kind of, no, no, she was blind in one eye. And the Lord touched that eye, and immediately it opened in front of God and everybody. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Okay. There's no way that eye's coming back. But God is the creator of your body. Yeah. I'm provoking you this morning. Do you feel provoked? Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to Faith Bible Church. <laughs> the church of provocation. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to welcome all of you that have joined us out there on the various social media platforms. Thank you for joining us this morning. Come all the way. Hop, yeah, that, okay. <laughs> the one behind the camera waves. Hey, great. Come all the way. Glory to <laughs> Uh, we want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's a privilege to break open the Word of God with you today. We want to encourage you, however, come join us here. Amen. At 28 Chapel Street in beautiful downtown Wallingford, Connecticut. We'll make you feel extremely welcome. Amen. And you can get under this corporate anointing. Amen. Amen. I believe that the power of God is ministering to you right where you're at. Amen. But you can get here and get it. Amen. Leave here victorious. Leave here free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall know the truth. And the truth will okay, say. Okay, there's three. You shall know the truth. <laughs> and the truth will make you free. Did you notice that? It's the truth that sets you free. The word of God is truth. Jesus said about the word of God that, Father, your words are light and truth. So, if I'm in the dark, all I need to do is turn on the light, mm -hmm. open up the Word, get into the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I'm bound by something, mm -hmm. somebody say something. something. Man, something covers a big scope. You could be bound by anything these days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the truth will set me free from whatever's trying to bind. Amen. So, you're about to be set free this morning. Thank you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You might have come in here bound. But you're going to leave free. Amen. Because the truth makes you free. Amen. That's why we put it on the sign out front. You shall know the truth. Did you notice that Jesus in John 14, he didn't say, I am a truth. 
He said, I am the truth. I am the way. Jesus said that. Not Pastor James. So folks out there with their false doctrine, there's lots of ways to get to heaven. There are lots of ways to get to God. Wrong! Bad! Big red X! Need to get their attention this morning. Hallelujah. It is not a truth that sets you free. It is the truth. Yeah. Thank you for those two amens. I said it is not a truth that sets you free. It is the truth. The truth. And Amen. Jesus, Jesus is, is the, the truth. truth. Amen. Amen. He is the one that sets you free. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we've been looking now uh, for these last two weeks. We started a new series, Inside of the Series, which is Inside of the Series. What's the word of the Lord to Faith Bible Church for 2021? Exceeding, abundant, overflow. That was a little weak, but okay. Exceeding, abundant, abundant overflow. overflow. Exceeding, Exceeding, abundant, overflow. And there's a lot going on in the natural that would fight against exceeding above. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Why don't you know the economy's terrible? Not in my world. Mm. Amen. Amen. Don't you know that we have the wrong governor? Don't you know we have the wrong president? Uh. Don't you know we have the wrong mayor? Uh, listen, none of that matters. That's right. That's right. I operate in a different economy. Mm. I said I operate in a different economy. How about you? Yeah. Okay, there's four of you. All right, we're starting to wake up. Praise the Lord. Sound awake. Sound awake. awake. You were translated out of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of His love. You operate in a different kingdom. You were bound by the way the world does things. You thought the way the world thought. You acted the way the world acted. But when you came into the kingdom, when you said, Jesus, be the Lord of my life, your life radically changed for the better. Listen to me immediately. Yes. Whether you recognized it or not, immediately. And so while we gather on a Sunday morning to hear the Word of God and then to become a doer of the Word of God is because when you apply truth to your life, you see, you can, the devil has no issue with you sitting here all live long day and listening to a message. He has less of a problem with you reading your Bible every day. He has no trouble with you watching Joyce or Joel or John or whoever it is, or Steve, whoever it is you watch, right? No trouble with that whatsoever. What he has a problem with is when you begin to put the Word of God to work yes. in your life. Yes. And it's why Jesus said this, he comes immediately to try to snatch it out of your spirit. How does he try to come immediately? Well, he shows up immediately because well, he's a jerk. He's always around. I say he's always around. Right? But he's not everywhere. He's not, he's not omnipresent. There's just there's a lot of demons. And, and they've got a pretty good communication network. Listen, here, this is not in my notes. Are you ready? Yeah. The church could learn from the devil on how to walk in unity. Because deception walks in lockstep with lies. And lies walks in lockstep with sly. And Sly walks lockstep with coming. Yeah. And they lock together. And they all approach. Yeah. Yeah. And they're very, very difficult to set. That's why you need to drive them all off at once. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we know that the word of the Lord to us for 2021 is exceeding abundant overflow. Mm -hmm. And how many of you have had some opp opposition yeah. to that word? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You should expect it. You should, you should expect it. Amen. We, we, didn't, we didn't, you know, say everything was going to pop up at Tunis for you. Right. We, we didn't say that everything was going to turn up two lips. As a matter of fact, we've been teaching you for the last six weeks. You need to set your jaw right. like flint. Amen. You need Amen. to be expecting opposition. Satan is counting on your laziness. Mm -hmm. Mama, I'll write that down. Go ahead and type that in the chat. Yeah, yeah, come on, we'll write that down. You're taking notes. Satan is counting on you being lazy. He's counting on it. Uh, he's, he's counting on the cushions being uncomfortable this morning. 
He's counting on it being too warm in here. That you'll get distracted by how your butt is feeling or how it's, it's just it's too warm in here. And gee, I wonder if he's going to go past noon today. It's already 11.30. Sure. Wow. He hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. I find that when you're delivering truth, I use humor, by the way, to open up your spirits. Right? Because, by the way, did you know that, or maybe you didn't know this, confusion, strife, division shuts your spirit down. Yeah. Anger shuts your spirit down. So I use humor to open your spirit up. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes, it is. Are you listening to me? Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, we've been looking now for the last couple of weeks. Well, we really just started it last week. About ruling and reigning in life. Amen. Amen. Ruling and reigning in life. And what I'm hoping that you get out of this is not some feel good. Yay, I'm a Christian and nothing's ever going to go wrong. That's not what I'm teaching. No. What I'm teaching is that when your adversary comes, yep. and he will, he, will. he will, it is your job. My job. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That was, the, that was the audience participation part. It's your job. My job. My job. To drive him off. If a thief shows up at your front door, I don't know about you, uh, I, I might have fractured a law or two back in the day. Um, I typically didn't want to ring somebody's doorbell and say, hello, I'm here to steal your stuff. <laughs> so why are you expecting Satan to do the same thing? He typically doesn't announce himself. Yeah. But you'll know when he's around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my goodness. Killing, stealing, mm -hmm. and destroying are the result of him being around. That's it. So, if something is killing you, sickness, disease, you know, all sickness is limited death. That's all it is. Right? Sickness and disease is limited death. If it's killing you, if it's stealing from you, if it's destroying your life, you know who it is. There is your announcement. Mm -hmm. It is now your job to drive him off. That's right. You see, Adam failed at that in the garden. Adam knew who Satan was. God had told him. He said, protect and keep the garden. Pretty sure Adam said, from who? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure God said, the devil. And there he is, right there. That's what he looks like, killing, stealing, and destroying. When he comes into your house, you're to drive him off. Are you listening to me? So, let's open up the Bible to Genesis chapter 1. You're right, I didn't leave myself a bit of time to preach. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 1. If you understand Genesis, the first chapter, and Genesis, the second chapter, you can understand the rest of the Bible. People ask me often, Pastor, why is there so much terrible stuff going on in the world? So many bad things happening to good people. Why is there so much sickness? Why is there so much poverty? Why is there so much disease? Well, why does God allow it? Well, he didn't. God created a perfect earth. How do I know this? Because God's perfect. And he created a perfect man named Adam. Perfect. Perfect. But he saw something in Adam that it didn't quite work. He saw when Adam was alone. Now we think of alone as modern day vernacular, alone, meaning by himself. Well, that's not how that word is translated in the Greek. It's actually a compound word, all one. When Adam was all one. What does that mean? Uh, let, me, let me rock your world for a minute. Adam had in, the, in himself the ability, male and female. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because that's what God had in him. Right. So Adam had the ability to create male spirits and female spirits. Mm -hmm. Hello? You with me? You going home? Some of you haven't thought about that. You're an eternal being. Yeah. You're an eternal being. 
You are created in the image and likeness of God. You're going to live forever. Adam had that ability. You have that ability. Any of you in here, parents? Yeah, you know what you did? You created eternal beings just like God. Why? You're created in his image and likeness. Your children are going to live forever. I say your children are going to live forever. Amen. Amen. They're eternal spirits, just like you, just like your heavenly father. When God saw that it was all together, he said, that's not going to be caused Adam to go to sleep. Come on, you know the story. I see some of you shaking your heads. Right? Took out a rib, created Eve. It was Adam that named her Eve. Right? Why? Because Adam had been given authority in the earth. Adam had been given permission by God to have dominion and authority in the earth. When you have dominion and authority, it means you get to name things. How do I know this? God caused all of creation to pass in front of Adam. And listen, when I get to heaven, I need to find this out. As a scientist, you'll understand. Like, how did he know all the fish? Because they were all in the ocean. Could Adam breathe underwater? I, 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 I don't know. But I'm going to ask. I'm going to find out. Right? He caused all of the fish to go in front. And Adam, oh, yep, that's a lionfish. Oh, yep, that's a shark. No, it's not just a shark. It's a tiger shark. Oh, that's a lemon shark. Come on. Yeah. And you know why it's a tiger shark? Because it looks like a tiger shark. It acts like a tiger shark. It can only be a tiger shark. So Adam named it tiger shark. Yeah, you're going to chew on that. Yeah, that'll come to you later on when you get home. So here is Adam with all authority. Genesis 1, 26, God says, let us create man in our image and likeness. So am I right about that? I am, aren't I? Hallelujah. And, yeah, I wrote in my notes, Darwin was wrong. <laughs> uh, you do understand, you know, we have some science people in our own, thank you. Right? That it is the theory of evolution. Darwin wrote the theory of evolution. It is the scientific community's scientific method that must prove that the theory is right. Am I right? Did I get that right? You use the scientific method to prove a theory. You know what they haven't done yet? They haven't proved his theory. Do you know why? Do you know why? He's wrong. <laughs> he has a theory. And his theory is that a monkey can turn into a human. Come on. His theory is that a fish can turn into a rat that can turn into a dinosaur. That's his theory. That's evolution. Now, we can talk about natural selection and all those things that you know make animals seem smarter than they really are. Right? And, you know, uh, there's a group of monkeys that in a certain, on a certain island... Uh, have found out that if you dip straws down termite mounds, termites will cling to the straw, and they'll eat them. Well, they figured that out. Does that mean they evolved? Well, no, because they're not using a knife and a fork. <laughs> I mean, seriously, folks. Come, come on, now, Darwin was wrong. And I know that's a big hurdle for him. I've, I've had Christians test me in this one. Well, um... Uh, you know, they've got those mud flats down there in Texas, and, um, you know, they've got dinosaur prints in the mud flats, and then they've got human prints also in the mud flats. And here's our theory that 100 million years ago, dinosaurs walked in the mud flats. And then 50 million years ago, a human walked in the mud flat. Uh, no. Here's, here's a bridge that Christians can't cross. Dinosaurs and man are on the planet at the same time. And when did they all die? I'm sorry, it wasn't a comet. What? Yes, sir. What? And as a matter of fact, I didn't understand this. I didn't realize this. I was actually watching a documentary here recently. And they were talking about, especially with birds, but with all of these dinosaurs that they find, mm -hmm. they're all like this. You ever notice that picture of dinosaur bones? And you know, when they find them, they're all like this? Well, it's that reaction when you're drowning. Mm -hmm. When you take your last breath. That's like... And how do you create a fossil? Well, you take a bone and you surround it by mud. Mm -hmm. You know, they sit there for a while. Okay. Well, <laughs> <I go. laughs> 
Hallelujah. So, what does God say in Genesis 1.26? He says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, everything that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. And then in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And then he blessed them. Then he blessed them. You know, when God blesses something, it stays blessed. Let me try that again. That was a little weak. You were all listening to the motorcycle. When God, it wasn't a motorcycle, by the way. When God blesses someone, they stay blessed. Are you listening to me? So he blesses our father, Adam, in the garden. And here's his blessing. Be fruitful. Have a lot of kids. Did Adam have a lot of kids? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? And multiply. Did Adam multiply and fill the earth? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the air, the birds of the air. Oh, yeah, fish of the sea, birds of the air. <laughs> and over every living thing that moves on the earth. We have been believing a lie. We have somehow humans brought in brought into the concept or notion that we're less than Amen. we're supposed to be ruling yeah. we're supposed to have dominion yeah. right they did a study here recently that you know if you boil down the human body to its essence it's 576 dollars worth of chemicals so we believe that we're worth less than 600 bucks you're right, yeah, then we got a stimulus for, anyways, phrase. <laughs> <laughs> it would seem that the government knows exactly what you're worth in chemical. 600 bucks. <laughs> and for a family of two, here's 1,400. <laughs> you're special. <laughs> Was it 1,200? Praise the Lord. Anyways, I am so grateful that I am not reliant upon the government. Amen. Hallelujah. Neither should you be. Amen. Neither should you be. Amen. 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 Be reliant on him. We're going to get into it today. Amen. Amen. God created man, put man in charge, and said when man was given dominion and put in charge of the garden, the Bible records these words, and God said, it's very good. Amen. Amen. We're supposed to be running the show. We're supposed to be. And the church, yeah. especially. That's right. And the church, yeah. especially. Yeah. And listen to me. I'm not talking about church, creed, or doctrine. I'm not talking about one denomination versus another denomination. I am talking about a Bible-believing church. Yeah. A church, an ecclesia, a people group that believe that that Bible is the truth. Yeah. 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 And how we're to rule and how we're to subdue and how we're to reign, everything is contained in there. Right? We can wipe out everything on the face of the planet by getting rid of two things. Pride and greed. Mm -hmm. Those two things eliminated, everything falls into place. Yeah. Well, whose job is it to run it off? Uh, it's the church. We don't like what's going on down here. We're supposed to be the ones that exercise authority. That's right. Let me ask you a question. Why do you think prayer meeting is the least attended, most unpopular thing in the church? Because it's the most effective, most powerful thing. It's the thing that Satan fights the most. He's okay with you showing up here on Sunday. I'm happy to see you on Sunday. But you know what? Thursday night, aren't you always tired? Oh, exhausted. 6.15 comes, you're like, oh, I'm just going to sit right here. Yeah, come on. And the devil's going, yeah, you really should. <laughs> You've earned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hump day. It's past hump day. You're in the long stretch. Take, you know what? Coast through the west of the week. You, come on. Yeah. You deserve a break. Jesus said it like this, and th th this will show you the, the issue. All the way back at the garden. Couldn't you pray for an hour? Yeah. yeah he they said kept that. falling asleep on him. Yeah. He's about to be crucified. They know it. Jesus, why don't you go handle that? <laughs> right? Came back on three separate occasions. <laughs> really? You think the first time Jesus said something to somebody, they're going, wow, you know, we're going to straighten up here. Listen, let's keep talking, you and I. 
I don't want him coming back to find me asleep again. Or maybe it's a reflection of the modern church that's gotten so comfortable with the presence of God that we don't respond to it any longer when it shows up. Mm -hmm. Amen. We all, man, the presence of God shows in. Yeah. Uh, just like last week. I don't understand when he gets so excited about four every week. It's just, you know, it's... <sighs> Ouch! Ouch! I hear you. Right? This is the serious part. This is the growing up part. By the way, these messages are growing up messages. This is not for a young church. This is not for a new believer. Amen? This is for people that know better. Yeah. Yeah, we're asleep at the switch. And we're happy about it. We're okay with it. We're comfortable with it. You know, this, somebody else will cover prayer this week. I, you know, I'll, I'll go next week. And then next week comes. And then, and then, and then next week comes. And then next week comes. Come, come on! Yeah. We're supposed to be exercising dominion. How? Right. Through prayer? Through prayer. Through the words we speak? Yeah. Hallelujah. I got these two words in my spirit the Thursday before the election. Red wave. Mm. And some of my more politically minded friends were like, Oh, yeah, Donald Trump's going to win the White House. I didn't say that. The two words I got were red wave. The blood bought church standing up, yeah. taking her place yeah. in the earth and beginning to speak and to declare, beginning to decree and declare, beginning to establish what? His second coming. Amen. Because he's coming. Yes. And the devil is counting on us to be comfortable before he gets here. Mm -hmm. So why? We'll be like those five foolish virgins mm -hmm. that weren't ready. Yep. Jesus showed up. We'll be like, oh man, why didn't you wake me up? <laughs> hey, can I borrow some of your oil? Yeah. No, no, no. I want to be hot. Yeah. I want to be a tip of spear. Eight. I want to be at the point of the thrust. Amen. I want to be the first to go and the last to know. Hoorah! <laughs> I want to be the one that when God says, I need this done, mm -hmm. that I'm, uh, I'm awake and I'm at the wheel going, sir, yes, sir, let's go get that done. Amen. That's exercising dominion. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When Adam sinned, yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. Slow down, Pastor. Okay. We've been believing a lie. The church, we've been believing that we're less than. Hallelujah. We're not good enough. We're not, we're not strong enough. You're the wrong color, the wrong gender, the wrong family name. Listen to me. It's all lies. I was preparing for this. Do you know that after the flood, somebody say the flood, the flood. there was eight people on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. Noah and his family. Mm -hmm. There was eight of them. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Yeah. And if you know your Bible, and you do, he had three sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. You with me? Yeah. So he say three boys. Three boys. Okay. Shem... Ha, ha, Shem was the father of the Semitic people. Somebody say the Jews all the way to Israel. The Jews. The Jews. All the way to and then all the way to China. And all the way to Russia. Russia. Japheth, he was the father of the Europeans. You know, whitey. <laughs> <laughs> and Ham was the father of people of color. The Africans, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jebusites. Hey, listen to me. They all had one father. His name is Noah. I don't care what the media is telling you. We are all created in the image of God, and your rapper doesn't amount to a thing. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> right? You're going to fall out with me because my wrapper, it's a sixteenth of an inch thick. Mm -hmm. So is yours. Yep. Mm -hmm. And when you cut my wrapper, I bleed the same red blood that you bleed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? And my spirit has been created 
in the image of his spirit, which is created in the image of your spirit. So the first thing that I have to do is recognize that all of you are image bearers yeah. of the yeah. Most High God. Amen. And if I recognize that you're all image bearers, then we're all brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. And we've all got one father. Uh, no. Do you know who Noah's father was? Come on, Lamech. Do you know who Lamech's father was? Methuselah. Do you know who Methuselah's grandfather was? Adam. Do you know what Methuselah's name means? When he dies, it comes. Do you know Methuselah was the longest living man in the Bible? Do you know why? It's, the, it's, a, it's a shadow of the mercy of God. When he dies, the flood comes. When Methuselah died is when the flood happened. 969 years, God held it back. Wow. Yeah. Oh, are you awake now? <laughs> now that we're all brothers and sisters in the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Actually, it is a good family. It's also a gang. It's the toughest gang on the planet. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Amen. Somebody say, I'm tougher than hell. I'm tougher than hell. <laughs> That doesn't mean to the chew, by the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. When Adam sinned, we lost our dominion. 1 Corinthians 15 says, the Apostle Paul, uh, by unction of the Holy Ghost, says, I first delivered to you that, uh, that which I received from Christ, that he died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas. He was seen by Peter. And then by the twelve... And then he was seen by over 500 other brethren at once. Somebody say it wasn't just the disciples. It wasn't just the disciples. There was 500 other people outside of the disciples. And some of those had fallen asleep. And after that, he was seen by James, his brother. Then he was seen by all of the apostles. And then last of all, he was seen by me. The apostle Paul said he had an encounter with the living Christ. He saw Jesus. And then in verse 22, he says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Amen. When Adam sinned and fell, he took the dominion, or, or the dominion that he had, that God placed on him in the garden, was taken away from him, and it went to Satan. Yeah. And Satan exercised dominion as the Lord of death, he was the one that had the keys, somebody help me preach, to death, hell, and the grave. And he was the Lord of death from that moment until Jesus stepped on the planet. Amen. And I know this because John the Revelator said, I saw Jesus on the Lord's day. And he wasn't like a little lamb. <laughs> he had a long white, and like white, like fire was coming out of his eye. And his legs were like burnished brack. And his voice was the sound of many waters. And he said, I am he who was dead, but now I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Who, who took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from Satan? Jesus. Jesus did. And we should revel in that. We celebrated it two weeks ago. We all say you celebrate Jesus. Why? He walked out of the tomb. Nobody else ever did that before. Mm -hmm. Walked right out of hell to, with the keys of death and hell and the grave. Jesus did it. Amen. But I'd like to show you something because we should celebrate that. Go to Luke's Gospel. On your way to Luke, stop by Matthew. <laughs> On your way to Luke, stop by Matthew. Adam lost his place. He lost dominion. He sold out to Satan. Satan took that authority and began to exercise it harshly on the earth. How do I know this? Because the Bible says that by the time Noah was on the earth, that there was not one that was thinking about God. That the whole earth had become reprobate. They were all sinning and willfully sinning and thumbing their nose at God. They all knew about him, but they were, all, they were having nothing to do with him. There was only one, Noah. Hallelujah. Membership has its privilege. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Are you there, Matthew 3? So Jesus comes. 
He announces his earthly ministry in Luke, right? But here in Matthew 3, in verse 13, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized you, uh, and you're coming to me? Listen, John knew who Jesus was. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away this. John knew. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. You know, John the Baptist, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. He knew who Jesus was. And Jesus said to him, Permit it to, for now, for it is fitting to fulfill all righteousness. So, what do you mean all righteousness? Jesus needed to fulfill the scriptures. So he did. Amen? And one gospel writer records these words that there was a voice heard from heaven. Mark records these words. And as Jesus is baptized, and a voice from heaven says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Somebody say, beloved Son. Beloved Son. In whom I am well pleased. And John sees the body of the, the, the Spirit of the Lord descending in bodily form of a dove and comes to rest on Jesus. Now, now John knew by the scriptures that when he saw that, that's the Messiah. But he knew before then. Mm -hmm. I said he knew before then. Now he just had confirmation. Mm -hmm. Now he knows what he knows. Amen? Amen. Amen? And so the Bible says this, that Jesus was led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So that he could be tempted. He went willingly. So that he could be tempted. And your Bible says in Matthew 4, then Jesus was led by the spirit of the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. We could talk about that for, you know, fasting for 40 minutes and being hungry. He did it for 40 days. Amen. And so the tempter, you know, the devil, he comes to him and he says, if you're the son of God. If you're the son of God. Now we just heard in Matthew's gospel, the voice of the Lord, the voice of the, our heavenly father saying, this is my son. Mm -hmm. So the very first temptation that Jesus has is his identity. Yeah. It's the same temptation you have. Yeah. I'm going to come out. I need, I need to start preaching to you. I'm running out of time. You ready? Yep. Don't let anyone define you yeah. except your Heavenly Father. Amen. So don't let anybody identify you except your Heavenly Father. Amen. Don't let anyone define you except your Heavenly Father. Amen. Don't let anyone. Jesus was tempted in his identity. If you be the Son of God. Well, God had just said to him, listen to me, the very chapter before, behold, my beloved Son. You see what Satan did? Mm -hmm. It's very subtle. It's very, it's very crafty. Yeah. He took out one word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He took out beloved. Mm -hmm. God just said, this is my beloved mm -hmm. Son. And Satan said, if you're the Son. Yeah. He was immediately stepping him down. Do you think the devil's trying to do the same thing to you? Yeah. Yeah. He is always, uh, always trying to step you. You may as well get it settled now. You're his beloved child. Amen. Somebody shout at me a little bit. Right? Type that in the chat. I'm his beloved child. I'm his beloved child. Right? Beloved you can't child. define me. Yeah. I'm his beloved child. Oh, no, no, no. You can't be. No, no, listen. I say this all the time. I'm his favorite child. Don't worry about it. You're next. <laughs> no, I say it jokingly, but I want your thinking to elevate it. Yeah. To the truth of the word of God. Amen. You're his beloved child. Amen. You can't get God to love you any more than he loves you right now. Amen. So get it settled. Get it settled. I am his beloved child. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, Jesus was hungry. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He says, if you're the son of God, command these stones to become bread. And Jesus answers them, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We get tested and tempted in who our source of provision is. Jesus passed this test with flying colors. The devil comes and says, you're hungry, turn those stones into bread. Now I've said this to you before, the devil is spiritually dead, so he was really looking for a sign that would show him that Jesus is the Messiah. He needed something to see. Yeah. Right? Because he's spiritually dead. So he knew that if, he, if Jesus could turn those stones into bread, that's got to be the Messiah. Right? And listen, by the way, Jesus could have turned that whole mountain into a loaf of bread with a big log of butter rolling down the back of it. <laughs> no questions asked. But he was not going to fall into Satan's trap. Here's the source of my provision. 
This is a difficult one for us. I don't, I'm, I don't have enough time to tell. I need to take my time. I'm going to lead in here. This is a two-parter. We get tempted in this every day. Who, are, who we are identify ourselves with. And, you know, you see it happening in our country, right, where you have to be identified by race. Yep, race. There's one race. It's the human race. I'm going to say that again because they're watching. It's the human race. Well, it's, you know, you're black, red, white, yellow, brown. You're identified by your skin color, gender, male, female. Well, now there's 156 different genders. Yeah. <laughs> as, as if God didn't know what he was doing. Oh, amen. Male and female, he created them. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't people out there that are genuinely struggling. Because they're watching. If you're genuinely struggling, you need to come here. Because we'll love you. Amen. We'll give you the truth. Amen. Amen. And that truth will set you free. Amen. Are you listening to me? This business of, uh, you know, I'm against or da, 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 mm. ought not be. No. You're drug addicted? Get here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Watching porn? Get get here. Amen. You listen, fooling around on your spouse? Get get here. Amen. Get here. Struggling with your identity? Get get here. Amen. Help me preach. Amen. Because we're supposed to be taking this authority and dominion that we operate in. Yep. That's why we have it up here. We're to be making disciples. Yeah. I have a dear pastor friend of mine down in the Philadelphia area started praying on Psalm 2 and their prayer night. Lord, give us the nations. Give us the heathen. Yeah. Lord, give us the nations. Give us the heathen. Mm -hmm. And a homosexual man showed up to his Bible study. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. And then Next week, he bought some of his friends. And the next week, he bought some of his friends. And what was he getting? An answer to his prayer. Yeah. Right? You see, it's not my job to clean people up any more than it's your job to clean people up. And we're not to sit in judgment of anybody. Right. Because you are all terrible sinners. Yeah. Right? Our job is to get them around the presence of God and the love of God. Are you listening to me? I mean, i got to share this. I was uh, a property manager for a friend of mine. And we were selling a piece of property. And uh, I was meeting uh, with their real estate agent. And he was a tall, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a tall man, but he was a tall man. And he, you know, he was kind of like this. So, and it was pouring rain, so we're standing in the garage. As it was pouring rain, waiting for his client to show up, we're going to show, show up for the building. And so uh, it was back when um, the uh, Supreme Court, or the, actually it was the DOJ and the Attorney General of the United States, had said that they were no longer going to uphold DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act. Right, they were just gonna, it was on the post, but they weren't going to enforce the law. So he asked me what I thought about that, and I was like, well, this is kind of a loaded question. <laughs> so I said to him, I said, you know, when you have human beings involved, when you get, you know, you have people that are sitting, I mean, there's human beings on the court, and then there's human beings in the con, I mean, when you have human beings involved, it's going to be messy. Yeah. He goes, yeah, he says, but listen, I'm a homosexual man. I was like, oh boy. Now <laughs> <laughs> we're in for it. He says, but my pastor is preaching. That homosexuality is a sin. I said, yeah, that's what the Bible says, all right. Lying is a sin. Stealing is a sin. Cheating is a sin. Homosexuality is a sin. That's what the Bible says. He says, yeah. He says, I heard that. I decided I didn't want to go to hell, so I'm a celibate man. I broke up with my boyfriend. And I've been celibate ever since. And I said, so the truth has set you free. He said, yeah. Now, I still struggle with same-sex attraction. See, that's what we don't understand. As heterosexual people, we don't understand same-sex attraction. But I know the root of it. It's a spirit. Are you listening to me? Now, we can deal with the spirit, can't we? And the lust of the flesh doesn't have to be a spirit involved. right? Your flesh could lean that way. Are you and what's going to cause my flesh to line up with the word of God? My spirit lined up with the truth, which pulls my will. Come on. You listen to me? So, I'm going to say it because there are people watching. We're not against anyone. We don't carry signs that say God hates fags. No. That's like people standing out in front of abortion clinics, putting pictures of aborted babies in front of young girls that are already terrified. Right? You want to help? Invite her into your house. Yeah. Amen. 
You want to help? You say, I'll take you to the doctor and we'll get you your free nails. You can stay with us until you have the baby. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's how you help. That's how you help. Oh, I couldn't do that. Yeah, I know. You can go out and protest, though. I better stop. I'm, I'm... <laughs> Prayer is the key. Amen. So, the devil then takes uh, Jesus up to uh, uh, the, the high holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said, If you're the Son of Man, throw yourself down. It's written, He'll give the angels charge over you. Amen? And Jesus responds, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And then the devil took him to an exceedingly high mountain. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Somebody say, I'm listening. I'm listening. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to the, him, so this is the devil talking to Jesus, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Who's got dominion in the earth? The devil. At that moment in time, the devil does. Right? And then I told you to go to Luke's gospel, right? So you're, you're tempted in the th these three arenas. You're tempted in your identity. You're tempted in your ego. And you're tempted in the source of your provision. You're tempted in your uh, ego. You're tempted, you're tempted in your authority. Right? Because when the, when, the, when the devil took him up on that exceeding high mountain, showed him all the kings, Jesus said, hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, he says, if you'll fall down and worship me, I'll give you all this glory. Jesus' authority was rooted in doing only what he saw the Father to do, doing. Jesus' authority was rooted only in what he heard the Father say to say. His authority came from God. Right. He recognized he had been given authority. So Jesus was tempted in his identity, his authority, and his source of provision. So are you. Every day. That's why when Jesus has that wonderful prayer, our Father who art in heaven, give us this day daily bread. Daily bread. Daily you're my provider. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Jesus is tempted the three ways. You and I are tempted with a difference. Adam failed the test. So do you and I. <laughs> Jesus did not fail those tests. That's why he's perfect. Amen. 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 And here's what Jesus did. You see, uh, I saw this, and you have to stay with me now because this is where we need to get to in order to go to the next place. Somebody say, I'm ready to go to the next place. Before the cross, before Jesus went to the cross, the Bible records in Luke's Gospel. Did I send you to Luke's Gospel? Did I give you the chapter? Yeah. Go to Luke's Gospel, the 10th chapter. And I'll come out here and talk to you. Luke's Gospel, the 10th chapter. Jesus sends out the 70. Right? Did you notice that? He sends 70. He sends them out two by two. And he sends them out to go and preach the gospel, which we hear in Luke 4 is captivity. Chains are broken. If you're poor, come into the kingdom. And you don't have to be poor anymore. If you're bound... You can be set free. Amen. The acceptable year of the Lord. And the Bible says the 70 return. They said, Jesus, even demons are subject to us in your name. Amen. It's before he went to the cross. So nothing super spiritual had to happen. Are you, you're not paying attention to me. Before Jesus went to the cross... He gave his disciples authority. Mm -hmm. What was he doing? He was telling them, you need to start acting like your father. You mm -hmm. need to start acting like me. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's supposed to exercise dominion. Right. Now, here's what he didn't tell them. Here's the spiritual side of this. Because Jesus knows that you and I are created in a higher order than Satan is. Right. Mm -hmm. Satan yeah. is an angel. That's right. yeah. And the Bible says, and by the way, is an angel a created being? And the Bible says in Psalm 2 that you have been given dominion over all the works of his creation. So Satan knew at that moment, the moment that God gave dominion to Adam, he knew at that moment Adam had dominion over him. So Jesus came and restored simply by teaching and preaching the kingdom of God. Help me preach. Amen. Here's how you exercise authority. Take my name. 
and go exercise authority over demons. He says, matter of fact, I give you authority over all the works of the enemy. One translation says, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. He says, matter of fact, I give you authority over, come on, serpents and scorpions. What's he doing? I'm just reestablishing what Adam lost. Before he went to the cross. I said this to you last time. How many of you, know, when you're out there ripping and running, you don't do that anymore, praise the Lord. But, you know, uh, Friday night, the devil's here, oh, it's my party, woo! And you go, nah, I'm too tired. I'm going to stay home tonight. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to watch. watch television tonight. I don't feel like going out. Devil wants you to go out and party. You shut him down. You're spiritually dead. You're not even in the kingdom yet. Why? You're creating a higher order. Amen. Listen, you've been over him your whole life. Amen. You didn't need to get born again to have that happen. You've been created in a higher order. The issue that you and I have, we've been yielding to him for so long, and we've been yielding to our flesh for so long, That's we true. forgot how to exercise dominion over him. And then Jesus goes to the cross. And, hallelujah, forgives us of all of our sins. Because the enemy uses condemnation. Oh, you're a terrible person. You're sinning all the You're such a terrible sinner. Oh, it's no wonder nothing ever goes right for you. Because you're awful. And God doesn't like you very much. Liar! If you're a born-again Christian... All of your sins have been forgiven Amen. the moment you confess them. Amen. Amen. And he never remembers them. Don't you find this interesting that we're always confessing the same sin that we did 10 years ago? And God's like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't remember that time? I have no idea what you're... Do you hear that conversation? He takes your sin and throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. Right. Where he never remembers it again. And here you are bringing it up. Yeah, you remember that time? No. He does not. So, Jesus' blood washes all of your sins away. Jesus' resurrection reestablishes you spiritually in the seat of authority in the universe. Because you have been raised to sit in the same seat that Jesus sits in, in heavenly places. Right. Amen. Am I preaching good just yet? Amen. Yeah. So, now you have natural authority, spiritual authority. What do you do with it? You ready to go to Matthew? Promise I'll unhook. Matthew 28. Jesus appearing to his disciples after he has been raised from the dead, after he has defeated Satan, and, and then it's your job, my job, to enforce his defeat now. In Matthew 28, appearing to his disciples, somebody say, I'm a disciple. I'm a disciple. Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. Is that what your Bible says? Let me give you the reference. Matthew 28 and 18. He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on the earth. Go, therefore. Well, what the heck is therefore? Well, therefore is an adverb. You ready for English class? Therefore is an adverb. For that or this purpose, referring to something previously stated. So what was Jesus' previous statement? All authority has been given to me. Go. Therefore. In what? In that authority that's been given to me. Do what? Make disciples. See, it's our job to be making disciples. We're supposed to be discipling one another. We're supposed to be strengthening and encouraging one another. Right? Can, can, I, can I just put you in remembrance of something? Back in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, where we were, in verse 18, Jesus said, I was beholding the adversary, in the Young's literal translation. I was beholding the adversary as lightning from heaven having fallen. 
Lo, I give you authority over serpents and scorpions. Listen to what the Passion Translation says. And we'll tie this all up in a nice, neat little bow. You ready? Yep. I watched Satan topple until he fell suddenly from heaven like lightning to the ground. Now you understand that I have imparted to you my authority to trample over his kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority. However, your real source of joy isn't merely that these spirits submit to you and your authority, but that your names are written in the journals of heaven and that you belong in God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Jesus, the master, has given you all authority to trample on the devil. Amen. So now, you're devil-demolishing disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're water-walking warriors. Amen. You're Bible-toting, scripture-quoting, Satan bashing, sin trashing, water walking warriors, devil demolishing disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're the bread bought church. Amen. That's who you are. Yeah. Right. Now go exercise that authority. Let me pray. Hallelujah. Father, thank you.